Welcome back to a Sunday morning edition. Eat my shorts right here at the random chair. Smoking me a lucky strike and contemplating the world's problems. One butthole to a time. Well, uh, as I often do on Sunday morning, I wake up sweaty and disheveled and quite the wreck. And, you know, I get about my day. And when I run out of monster drinks, I go make me a coffee. Or three, in this case. And uh, while I'm getting mom up and ready for the day and getting her lunches made and shit like that, watch a few videos, you know, because videos rock. And one of my favorite small gun channels uh, I've been watching for quite some time is uh, Blind Sniper. And he brings up some interesting ideas every once in a while. And uh, today's video, if you haven't seen it, uh, weapons for patrol and stuff like that, you might, you might want to go check it out. And uh, for those of you that want to hear my take on the matter, you know, buckle up. This might be a long one. Now, there's two schools of thought about patrol rifles, right? You have the circa 1970s and 80s U.S. Army and Marine Corps philosophy of fixed carry handles and lightweight sleek profile. And then you have the modern post-war on terror stance of let's hang every attachment off the fucking rifle we can. Now, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I'm going to give you my take on the matter. But I'm going to discuss both ideas kind of in concept here. Let's say you and, I don't know, a dozen of your friends, right? Let's say you're the commander of the 88th Boog Battalion, right? and you're going to go meet up with the 69th Division of Furries, right? This is the second battle of Ruby Ridge, and uh, you're out in the woods on patrol at night. Some key ideas here is, regardless of what platform you pick up, you want to have the same equipment as your other dudes do, at least the same caliber and magazines, because, you know, you may get locked in a firefight, and you may need to throw your buddy a magazine, or they may need to throw you one. Now, you shouldn't just be out there in your civvy clothes, right? You should have a nice pair of boots, uh, a good surplus uniform of some sort, you know, a camouflage fitting your area. You should probably have on some face paint, too, because, you know, being seen as a thing, right? You're going to want to have some form of radio communications, or an alternative means for that would be some sort of light system, right? Like those old school military flashlights with the red filter on it. Those are pretty effective. You're all going to want to be pretty well cross-trained with each other's roles, duties, and jobs, right? You know, should something happen to your commander, right? He catches one and falls down, then the rest of you are going to have to know what to do. Well, that's pretty important. You know, you're going to want to have support gear, your extra magazines, a snack, Maybe some liquor and cigarettes, you know, shit that soldiers need on patrol, right? Because that's the way it is. Now, let's say you are all running, you know, modern post-war on terror gear. You've got 70 pounds of shit on you if you're carrying a full pack. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're just going out two, three miles on patrol to police up your area, you know, search for enemy combatants or insurgents... That's a lot of fucking gear to carry around with you. Alternatively, if you're using 1970s, 1980s U.S. technology, you know, you've got a uh, Alice belt and some extra magazines, canteen, bayonet, shit like that. You know, it's a lot lighter. And you're not going to have quite the capabilities you would otherwise, but... The key takeaway in all this is, regardless of what system you pick out, Let's say there's 13 of you, at least two of you should have what's called a DMR type of setup. Right? The dude that's going to be doing some long range shit. So he's going to need a scope, capable rifle out to 500 yards, regardless of what platform you pick. Even a military surplus gun with a good scope will do it. You know? But at the end of the day, you're not going to have very many capabilities. Yeah, sure, you might have night vision and thermals and infrared and fucking you know, dildo attachment and a toaster oven and a tactical baked bean holder on your gun. 
if you don't know how to use any of that shit, you're not going to get very far. So I'd argue that the level of training and the level of skill that the dudes you're fighting with and you have are far more important than the platform, right? We, we've seen this in history time and time again, right? They didn't have that, that kind of shit in the Wild West, yet a lot of clandestine shit happened in the nighttime. Dudes with lever actions on horseback fucking ruled the day, right? Because they could get in, get out, and they could destroy shit very quickly, right? <clears throat> you know, same goes in history, right? You, you saw the Russians when they went into Chechnya, right? Uh, the Chechen banditos fucking wrecked their shit because, you know, they were a bunch of angry Muslims that pray with their rifle on their back. And uh, they know how to bushwhack in the nighttime or in the daytime. But let's say you're out on this patrol, right, and, you know, you see stuff. Well, okay, do you have a translator if somebody speaks a different language than you, depending on what theater you're in, right? Because you need to be able to gather intelligence. <laughs> You know, do you have the proper support equipment to lay down suppressive fire, right? Do you have the proper demolition tools you need to blow up shit, right? Because, I mean, let's face it, you're, you're one group of people out there and about, you know. You're, you're supposed to be a force multiplier, right? Blowing rail tracks, water towers, power substations, you know, enemy emplacements, whatever. Now, why haven't I talked much about what rifle platform you pick out? That's because it really doesn't matter. Go with what's standard operating procedure in your area. If everybody in New York State has an SKS, you should probably be planning for such thing, right? Whereas if you're in Washington State and you're a bunch of gun hipsters, you know, everybody might have a 545 AK. Out here in the, uh, you know, the great Northwest where I live, the standard 5.56 gun is what people run, an AR-15 platform. <coughs> and uh, most of your engagements will be under 300 yards anyway, unless you're in that DMR role, in which case you need something that hits just a little harder. Most of your targets might have 3A body armor if they have any at all, right? So what you pick really doesn't matter in that regard, and I'm going to tell you why. Most casualties on the battlefield in the last 150 years have been from artillery, right? Poison gas, machine gun fire, you know, things like that take you out of the fight. So having a good group and command structure type of thing and the proper support equipment to cover your movements and conceal your movements is far more important than what rifle you have. It's just like... In the concealed carry world, we talk about a pistol is a personal rescue piece of equipment, right? That's to get you to a long gun. It doesn't really matter what kind of handgun you have, as long as you can do handgun things with handguns at handgun distance. The same goes for the rifle. It doesn't really matter what rifle you have, as long as it's modern enough that you can do what you need to do with it. Anyway, I hope my Sunday morning babble made a little bit of sense. Uh, I'm going to go get myself cleaned up and start my fucking day. So, as always, have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you all for your love and support. And have a wonderful day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. And if you don't like what I have to say about why what rifle you pick doesn't really matter, then you can eat my shorts.